Okay. Today we got the Fossey Audio Bluetooth 5 stereo amplifier. We are going to be setting up a small set of speakers on the patio this year. So to drive those speakers that are outdoor speakers, we'll review those in the next video. Those ones are Yamaha speakers. We need a amplifier to drive those. So I bought an amplifier that we can connect Bluetooth from our phones or Amazon Alexa or Google or whatever to play music outside on our patio. So let's take a look at what we got. This one is the BT-10A. It is 50 watts by two channels and it has Bluetooth 5.0. So let's take a look at what we got. Okay, we got a little piece of paper, probably something about getting a gift card or something like that. Let's see. If we're happy, we can put a comment or write in a review on Amazon and get an extra 18 months in our warranty. Okay, so the user manual, accordion style user manual, a power adapter. And this one is so 19 volts by 4.7 amps, which is about like 90 watts or something like that. The antenna for the Bluetooth connection and the receiver itself and nothing hiding inside of it. Okay, so first off, it seems like it's okay quality on the outside. It's not plastic. It is aluminum or metal. It's metal at least. The knobs have good knurling. They have a good tension on them. They don't feel flimsy like they're doing nothing. They very well could be doing nothing, but I doubt it. Has a good satisfying click when you turn it on. A good detent in there. There's where our Bluetooth antenna connects. We have an auxiliary in, headphone jack, our power, and then speakers, left and right channels. Left and right. That's strange. They put the left channel on the right side and the right channel on the left side. Don't think it really matters. Maybe it's mislabeled. Oh, and I forgot to mention that these the wire throughs here are a through style. So you put your wire through this little hole and then you tighten on this and pinch it down on that hole. Okay, so here's the hole. You tighten this down and it pinches the, the wire into place. It secures it there. Some pretty thick rubber feet that are just glued on. And this is your front. You've got base. I don't know if you'll be able to see that very good. So base, treble, and volume. So one of the reasons I went with this one just instead of a little bit cheaper one that didn't have the bass and treble is so that Obviously, I could control the bass and treble, and that it's Bluetooth. Okay, and another good feature about this one was that it has a TPA 3116D2 chip in it, which I've heard is a decent chip. Uh, not a lot of noise comes through on it. I think I paid $65 Canadian for this. It came in a few days, and this is just going to kind of hide on a shelf and the speakers are going to go here and through the wall outside. Let's power it on and see how difficult it is to connect our phone to it. So we will plug in our 
antenna and screw it on. So here's our power adapter. We get a little blue light. This looks like just a, it is labeled Fossi Audio. I don't know if you can see that. So I guess they are making them for these devices, but it looks like just a power adapter for like a laptop. We'll plug it in. Okay, so right away plugging it in doesn't really do anything. I assume that we'll have to turn this on okay, and we get a red light and that's about it. Let's turn it on and we'll see if it shows up on our phone for Bluetooth. Okay, so I've just gone to the Bluetooth section of my phone and it shows up down here at the bottom. We'll click on it and see what it says. Pair, you don't need any passcode or anything. And that should be it. Okay, and one thing to note, when I connected the Bluetooth, I heard an audible click out of this. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it. I'll hold this up to the microphone so that you can maybe hear it. It happens when you disconnect as well. So I don't know if you'll be able to hear that little click, but like a little relay in there. And when you are connected with Bluetooth, you get a blue light. And when we disconnect, the light turns red and is set to auxiliary, which is going to be the port back here. So there's no physical switch on here to switch between. If you want to use the auxiliary port on the back, you have to disconnect Bluetooth which might seem like a pain, but okay. So on the phone, let's see what we have. So pretty much just audio and an input device. It's kind of what you get for things this cheap. Okay, so I've been running this on, connected to Bluetooth for about half an hour now, just to see how much it warms up. It doesn't seem, it's not uh, room temperature, it's maybe a couple degrees warmer, and that's about it. And the power brick, it also hasn't warmed up really much. There's a spot down here, slightly warmer than room temperature, and that's about it. So I think maybe we'll open this one up. There's some screws on the front, some screws on the back with Allen keys and we'll take a look inside. So let's do that. Okay. So I've got my Allen key bit and we'll take off the front here. Okay. So I you have to remove the uh, Bluetooth antenna to get this to slide out. So let's remove the screws on the back. We'll need a smaller Allen key for that. Okay, so let's remove this back plate and see if we can get inside here. And we can. Okay, so these wires are from the board. They are soldered on to our connection. And they are actually soldered on to the connector here. Okay, and then the connector is bolted to the frame backplate. So getting this out might be a little bit difficult. Let's see. So instead of I'm trying to unbolt these, which are soldered on. What I'm going to do is I've just removed the knobs here. So they just, they just slide off. So you can just slide them off and we'll remove this front cover. And then the, the PCB will come out the back. Okay. So I was just able to get my pliers and loosen these and loosen up the nuts around these controls. So we'll take these off and then our 
faceplate should come off. This will be easier than removing the back plate with all of those on it. And these come off pretty easily just with my fingers. Just got to be able to fit them in the groove. So now our face plate comes off. Keep that washer on there. And now our electronics can slide completely out. And we can take a look at what we have inside of here. So we have a heat sink here. Some Omron chip. I imagine that right here is going to be our Bluetooth module. Let's take a look. So it looks like a Qualcomm chip and that's going to be our Bluetooth module. So that's going to be the inside of this. On the back side, there is nothing. And interestingly, there's a very small switch here. So I don't know what that little switch is doing. Maybe it's a ground of some sort to ground the chassis of the, since it's a metal chassis, maybe it's a chassis that grounds this to the board. Okay, so let's get this back together. Okay, so we're just going to reassemble this here. Well, tight, finger tight, and then I'll use the pliers to tighten these back on. And they do have little indicators on them. So we'll turn them all the way down and then we'll replace them so that they're pointing at their low levels. Okay, so now the indicator should be in the right place. For each one. We'll put our Allen screws back in the front and then we'll reattach our back. Okay, it's all back together. So what we'll do next is we will plug in some speakers and see how it sounds. So I went ahead and hooked up these Yamaha speakers. These are rated for 80 watts each and the Bluetooth amplifier is rated for 50 watts per channel and it did a pretty considerably good job. And I didn't have any issues connecting and disconnecting Bluetooth to the device and powering these speakers. They sounded pretty good. I will be installing these on my deck for the summer and enjoying listening to some music off my Amazon Alexa and my phone. So I hope this video was helpful to you. Thanks for watching. Bye.